Hi. We'd like to do uh, an idea for you that was related to the H2O GATE Water Game Blue. See how fly like a catapult to penguin. Incredible a spectacle, a short time to get it. And I saw with grace and ease and luck. The ladies all love how I'm rocking the touch. Not giving a fly what the haters wanna be me. I'm flying right above them, but they can't even see me. Could have been that they didn't expect it. Caught them off guard. Didn't think I'd go in so hard. We could ask Judge Watner to preside on the verdict. He brings down the gavel and he shares what the word is. He said my style's invincible, your style's inadmissible. He stood have pointed at me and said, come oh, fuck with him. See, I'm terribly ill. Look, before we get started, you don't have to tell me. I know. I've got red on you. It's all right. Welcome back. Another beer, another story, another installment. Grizzly beer stories. This week, I'll be talking about modern times, mythic world, zzz, mythic worlds. <laughs> it's a... Hazy Galaxy IPA. Um, let me see. On the back, it says it's got an IBU of 50, a final gravity of 1.008, and the hops used in it are Galaxy Motuika. Although, I'll, and whenever I see a MOTU, you know, all my nerds out there know exactly what I'm thinking Mosaic Sultana. And the malt used are two row malted wheat. And flacked, flacked oats? Hmm. Must be a fancy way of doing oats, huh? All right, let's do what we do and check the pour. Ooh, that's pretty. And look, I know what I said, you know, that I would try to do a different beer next time. But what can I say? I love trying new IPAs. This won't be an all IPA channel, I promise. And I, But I will have to fight the urge to get just IPAs whenever I go looking for beers to share with y'all. Might have, might have bollocks that one up just a little bit, but it's still good. Let's see. Ooh, oh, oh yeah. So, first, let me lead off with this, and this is something that's near and dear to my beer heart. Okay, do you see this? This glass, in its entirety, to the tippity top, is, if you didn't know, and, and anyone that drinks beer should know, a pint, 16 ounces, okay? That, so, the fact that I couldn't pour this entire can to the tippy top, I left out at least an ounce and a half, if not two, perhaps. I, I haven't really taken that measurement yet. This might not seem like much with me sitting here, but if you go out to drink at all and you order a beer, you need to, one, check the menu to make sure that you're not paying for a pint. And look, if it doesn't matter to you, cool. If it doesn't matter, that's fine. But to me, if the menu says that they're going to bring me a pint and they bring me out a glass like this or worse, I'm going to tell them straight up, look, man, <laughs> you shorted me at least three, four, at least three dollars or, you know, or whatever the percentage would be. Because if we're supposed to get 16 ounces of beer and they bring out 14 and a half, Nah, I'm I'm sorry. That's just me being picky. Yeah, but guess what? That's my money. If you're bringing, if you if your menu says 16 ounces, then you better bring me 16 ounces. And I know you know that there's various people out there that that uh, that can share the same argument, the same complaint. Like, don't sell me the sizzle if you're not going to deliver the steak. Something something meat, you know. Um, anyways. Let me digress. This week, uh, I'll be sharing uh, the story of one of the first defining moments of music in my life. Um, you know, single mom, uh, I, as I've shared before, 
and I, you know, I really wasn't too interested in going out outside to play too much. So I ended up watching a good deal of television. Um, and you know, this was before that you could stream whatever you wanted whenever you wanted. So if you didn't catch whatever you wanted to watch the moment it was playing, you might be lucky and catch it, you know, in summer rerun season. But normally, you know, that was a long shot and, you know, it wasn't for, for anywhere between one and four months if it were to happen. So, and then I remember Saturday afternoons on Channel 8, which I think was KTVU, something like that, um, they would play movies, edited for TV, but they were still, you know, some really good movies. And, and you know, I kind of became, hmm, it's a point of pride and not that I was more or less the TV guide for the family. You know, like if they, if my parents ever got into a discussion, and this was during the time when we still lived with my dad for a short while. Um, if, it, if they ever got into a discussion about what was on what channel and when, if, they, if it escalated to the point of, I'm wrong, you're right, they'd say, hey, what day and time is, you know, this, this, uh, this show on? And I'd be like, oh, that's, you know, Tuesdays at 8 on channel 11 or whatever. And, you know, whatever side was advocating for that time would say, ha ha, I was right. You know, who says the, the words of children don't carry weight, you know? All right, now see this one right here? The, the malt. The malts in it. Oh, man. Those, the oats, the oats give it. So you can taste the hops. They absolutely do come through. But the oats and the wheat, but it, maybe it's because they're flacked. Um, yeah, the, the oats and the wheat, they, they give the beer like a full and heavy body. So it's really, really good. And let me see, what is this? It is, Seven point five. So again, you know, not not really too heavy, unless you're used to drinking those those beers that come in twenty four plus packs and you know sell nothing but bloatedness and empty promises of nothing really. Anyways, um, yeah, the the the, the oats and the wheat are just marvelous. That in, in addition to all of the hops, but but as you can see, they come in pint cans. So after a couple of these, you might be feeling a little intergalactic, yeah, planetary, planetary, intergalactic. Oh man, that's really good. And I know that I've said that a lot, and maybe one of these weeks, one of these times, I'll get to a beer that I just kind of go like, ew, mmm, not my cup of meat. Um, but yeah. So, Saturday afternoons, if we weren't doing anything, um, I'd probably be clicking around, you know, trying to find something to watch after Saturday morning cartoons, which is weird, right? Like, how does that, how is that not a thing anymore? I remember, I remember when I was a kid, <laughs> um, NBC, ABC, and CBS, and I think Fox too, but those three, the, the big three from like seven in the morning to noon would play some of the most awesome cartoons ever. I mean, this was before the golden age of Nickelodeon. So, but I mean, I remember NBC, CB, NBC ABC, and CBS, um, channels 10, 11, and 12 would play some of the greatest cartoons. And, and then after that, you know, after, after they would go off on, on, I think the last thing I would watch in the mornings was on ABC. And after that, golf would start. And I'd be like, click, 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 click. I couldn't click away fast enough. So I couldn't tell you anything about golf from back then. Um, Jack Nicholson? Jack Nichols? Anyways. Uh, I'd be clicking, you know. It, it, I probably did go out inside play for a little bit. And then I'd come back in and try to find something to watch. And this, this one time, I was clicking through... And I landed on KTVU, which I think was, see, and this is, this is a little shameful. 
uh, that I still remember these things. So Channel 8 was KTVU, Channel 9 was PBS, 10, 11, and 12 was NBC, ABC, and CBS. I don't remember too much else, so don't judge me too hard. Um, so yeah, KTVU, and it was a dark night, and I just, the, 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 it started off, the, the movie started off with this guitar that I will never forget. And, and I think, I, you know, that was seven, eight years old when this, when this first uh, occurred. And until it stuck with me, until I was older, that is how great um, this musical moment for me was. So, you know, the, 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 it starts off with a full moon and you hear the guitar come in. It goes, nar, 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 nar. and for those of you that could get it off of that bad guitarical Guitarical? I mean, it's got to be a word, right? I just use it. Um, guitar impression. Can you do an impression of a guitar? I mean, you can do an impression of a, what is it, trumpet, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, it was Creedence Clearwater Revival's Bad Moon Rising. Oh, man. And it was, it was the opening theme song, I, I, the opening title credits. There you go. It was the opening title credits to An American Werewolf in London. And granted, it was edited for TV, but it still freaked me out. I think I think I might have watched it all, but no, like at the beginning when that guitar comes in and then Mr. Fogarty starts singing, you know, I see a bad moon rising. Oh man, like that stuck with me. And then when I was when I got, you know, old enough and the internet was around, I searched for it. And well, I mean, nobody in my family was really into that type of music, so they couldn't have told me anything having to do with it anyway. And I wasn't going to ask any of the teachers at school, hey, do you know this, this song that goes like this? They would have been like, where did you hear <laughs> eight year old kid walking up asking them about Bad Moon Rising? Um, so yeah, it was, it, was, it was phenomenal. And it's because of that moment that I love Creedence Clearwater Revival. I mean, you don't have to like Creedence Cl Clearwater Revival, but. You know, you probably don't like good music if you don't. They don't have to be in your top ten, but the the swamp rock gets much respect. And uh, yeah, it was just it was a phenomenal day. And I watched, you know, when I got older, I watched American Werewolf in London, and it was great too. That's really good. I'm sorry. Like I, I can't find. Maybe I need to look up, uh, look, look in the thesaurus for you know really good and oh man and whatever other phrases I keep using for beers. It does have a little bit of an aftertaste, just a little bit, uh, a weensy bit, as I say. Um. So yeah, Bad Moon Rising on American Werewolf in London. The sequel that came out, what was it, 25 or 15? I can't remember when American Werewolf in Paris came out. Um, it was definitely more campy and comedic. I didn't really care for it. It wasn't horrible, but compared to American Werewolf in London, it just, it, it you know, maybe it's because I watched it when I was a kid and, and because of uh, Mr. Fogarty, and Credence, you know, CCR, that, that meant so much to me. Um, yeah. There you go. There's a moment. A moment in music, a moment in time. And the the band that originated Swamp Rock. Um, that's it for this week, for this time. I hope to see y'all on the next installment, too. Oh, man. Modern Times, Mythic World, Four Pack Pint. Thank you.